Hello and welcome to part two of the top down shooter game. Um, I'm Mr. Crow and I'm, I'm here to get, get us going a little bit further uh, in the top down shooter. Last time we were able to uh, create our main player, have them move around, have our enemy one uh, randomly spawn at the top of the screen and move down to the bottom. So we're gonna also add in uh, enemy two, uh, create a way for them to get removed at the end of the world um, and we'll see if we can get our projectile shooting and eventually we'll be getting to creating a score counter, a health bar, and um, also a timer so that we can see how long we survive in the game. Um, so at this point, we need to go into our back into our world class and you see how we created our if statement for calling this method. So we're only going to call this method when the number is uh, randomly less than one, uh, getting a random number between zero and 60, or zero and 59 technically. So um, I actually prefer having this if statement in my uh, original method. So I am going to cut and paste and organize it. I know this might be a little confusing so that my if statement here uh, is now right in this method. So I just took this part and I cut and paste so that the add object would happen because I want my axe, my main method to be as clean uh, and as simple as I possibly can have it and with the if uh, statement inside the act method it was just unnecessary when I can just have it in here and then I can create another method um, for add enemy two makes it very simple I can just copy paste change it to two change enemy to two and I can make it happen a little less often um, because we're gonna have actually different strengths for different enemies and how how many times you're going to need to fire your projectile at them. So we'll just start off with two, two enemies. Um, and we're going to make it so that they are uh, happening less often. And we might end up changing the look of this enemy too. But as you can see, they happen and are added to the world a little bit less often than our enemy one. Whoa, there's randomly it's happening a lot now. And they are added to the world in the same way as, since we copied and paste, pasted, we're added to the world in the same way that um, our enemy one is. And let's actually make this even less. And I want to make this a little bit less too. Because we're going to have a bunch of enemies coming in here. I don't want it to... I don't want it to happen all that often that an enemy gets added. Um when we have our bigger, badder enemies, uh, we want to make sure that these happen quite a bit more often than than those ones. And just even based on this so far, I mean, would I be able to get to all of them? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Um, but that's why we'll test. And once we create our, our projectiles, we'll, we'll have a little bit better understanding of what's going on. So um, let's go ahead and create our projectile class. So we're going to create a new subclass. Um, object. Um, let's make it one of these beepers, and the other uh, can be a great uh, projectile to use. Uh, they're fairly small, but large enough to see at least. Uh, otherwise, just as always, you can you can add in your own images, and you can use those images as you'd like. Um, but as we're going forward, we're going to need to go. What is what is causing and where is the projectile going to be located and what's causing it to happen? Well, if we push spacebar, when the, when the, where the ship is, the location of the ship is what we're going to use to, to fire the projectile, so, or the location of the projectile. So we're going to need to go into the player class, um, and we're going to call this uh, fire projectile. Okay, so I'm going to make that class ready, to get that method call ready public void fire projectile and then 
open up our method so that we're able to fire our projectile. And so um, we're going to do obviously an if statement if greenfoot dot is key down and we're going to have the space bar be the way we fire. Uh, you could use F you like WASD maybe F would be a, a natural use. Uh, once again I forgot to close parentheses there. Um, we are going to now do our get world dot to access our world, add object um, new projectile, uh, and then we're gonna. Where is it gonna be located? Well, we're gonna find the x value of. So this is an x and a y value. So where is it gonna be? Just like in our world class, it's looking right here. It's looking for the x value and the y value for where to add this enemy in. And so similarly, in our player, our projectile, it's looking for an X value and a Y value. Well, we wanna get the Y value of the player. So we're gonna add the object of the new projectile and where are we gonna put it? Well, we're gonna find the X value and find the Y value of the player. And we don't actually want the Y value to be right on in the center. We don't want it just to be right in the middle, add right in the middle. I mean, we could, but it it doesn't make sense we, we can change that so it doesn't so we want it to be right at the top okay so we can minus oh we can try 30 minus 30 from it from the y value because we're, we want it closer to zero we want it up going up goes closer to zero so we're, we're subtracting 30 okay and then we compile and then we run and we're not having this do anything. This projectile is not told to move yet. So since it's not told to move, when I push space, there's more than one projectile on top of it, a ton of them, but they have not been told to move. So we're gonna now go into our projectile and we are going to have our projectile, uh, public void, projectile move. We're going to talk about how that projectile is going to move, set location, get x, leave the x the same, get y minus 5. I like the projectiles to be able to move a, a little bit. Um, moves pretty fast, pretty good amount of speed if you're firing something I think. So I think 5 is a decent, decent speed to start off with at least. So have fun. You can fire, fire at will. Okay. There's a few things that we're going to need to cover up and make make clear. First of all, we won't do not want to be able to fire that often. So we're going to need to have a reload time of some sort. Second thing is we need not only our objects, but we need we also need our projectiles to to remove from the world when they reach the top. Have the objects removed from the world when they reach the bottom. Okay, so let's do that first. We, we're going to go into our projectile, and we're going to say uh, void remove from world. And we're going to say if get y equals equals zero, zero, which is the top of our world. So we're wondering... All right, what's the issue? What are we trying to solve here? Well, we're trying to solve what happens. We want our uh, object to get removed when? If it's touching the top of the world. So that's why that goes into our if statement, or our condition. So our, our command is uh, get world, because we're going to access the world class, because where is all of our where are all of our objects stored in some way or another? Well, they're stored in the world class when we save the world. They're added in right here or in our player code where we added our projectile. We got world and then we added the object, the new projectile. So we're adding and removing everything from the world. So it needs, well, whenever we're adding or removing something, it's going through the world. So we're going to remove object this. Now, whenever you remove object at all or remove object this in particular 
you need to make sure that that method is the very bottom method in your act. Why? Think about that for a second. Think about why that would be the case. Why would we want to add the very bottom? Well, coding is read, programming is read. They read it, the computer reads the code from top to bottom. So if we're removing object this, and I put this up here, it's going to remove the projectile from the world and it won't be here anymore. And then it'll try to read this code and try to mo continue moving the projectile up, but it's already gone. So it'll come up with an error and there will be a problem. And I'm gonna show you that here in a second. So let's first see, first test, see if our objects get removed. Oh yeah, they're not showing up. They're getting removed from the world. Okay, that's step one. So now we know how to do it for the projectiles. We'll sh do it for the enemies too, but I wanna go back and show you what happens what error happens and the why. Oh, it froze. Okay, the error pops up. And the error says, actor not in world. An attempt was made to use the actor's location while it is not in the world. Either the actor has not been inserted or it has been removed. Well, we removed it and then it tried to read, excuse me, <laughs> it tried to read where the actor's location was. But the actor is not in the world, they got removed. So going back to what we had, you have to make sure that that is the very last thing to get removed. And that goes for, for everything. Whenever you see actor not in world and attempt was made, it's probably getting removed before the end of the code. And there'll be another few ways that that can, that can happen. And we might need to edit some things and do different uh, sorts of things to make sure that that doesn't happen uh, too often, okay? So our projectiles now get removed. Um, now let's have our enemies get removed. So we need to go to our enemies. Because it's happening to all of our enemies, the exact same code, uh, we wanna do remove enemy. Move and remove. Uh, if, same, same deal, we can actually go into projectile. If you guys, if you're a slower typer, or you just want to go a little bit faster, copy this code, just the if statement, because we're actually going to change, because we're not removing it at the top of the screen. So we're going to go into our enemy, and if, well, if get y, it equals equals not zero, but the bottom of the screen. So it's a, what's the world size? Well, 600 by 600, meaning the total height the total width and the total height is 600. So it starts at zero and actually only goes to 599. So if get y 599, remove object this, now we can go into enemy one, instead of having to copy and paste it and do it exactly, we just do remove enemy. And guys, when it gets more and more complex, Creating these methods is a life saver. It is what you need to do. It's the proper way to code. It also saves a bunch of time. Now all I need to do is do remove enemy. That's in my super class, so it will in enemy two will inherit it. It is great, 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 great. So now my bull projectiles will get removed. Whew, I was scared for a second my enemies wouldn't pop up, but they're getting removed at the bottom of the screen. Look at that, look at that, look how easy it is. So now when I put an enemy three, four, five, all I need to do is copy these two and maybe three, four at the end lines of code and it will, I can paste them into enemy four, five, six, three, four, five, six, and all of it will be the same. Just makes it so much easier. And when you, in the real world, you guys might be having, you know, a hundred different methods that you want to use and reuse and reuse all you need to do is call the method and it'll and make it a subclass and they will inherit that same code. So it's a huge, huge, huge benefit. Okay. Um, now let's have our projectiles actually hit our enemies and remove the enemies from the world. Okay. Um, so we need to see, we need to think what is getting affected when we shoot our projectiles and our enemies get removed from the world? Well, the projectiles will be the ones affecting the enemy one and enemy two, 
And there, you could actually go through either class, uh, whether the enemy hits the projectile or the projectile hits the enemy. But since we are going to count based off the projectile hitting the enemy, um, and it just makes more logical sense to me to have it be put in the projectile code. So that's where we're going to start. Um, our projectile and we're going to create public void hit enemy okay so this is going to be a little bit different than the is touching um, because we are actually going to remove and we are going to count we're going to remove something else uh, through the projectile and the is touching you were just asking if it is touching object this, so the projectile, it would continue going on. But what we want is to not only remove the enemy object, but we also want to count to it. So the is touching does not necessarily work as well. Go when the projectile will not um, be able to remove the enemy as well if you use the is touching so we're going to use uh, intersecting so when the projectile flies it intersects with the enemy uh, then it will remove it so we need to declare that we are going to have an actor that we are going to locate and the thing that we're going to locate is the enemy all the enemies okay and so if we're going to make enemy I'm going to do lowercase enemy just to, so we don't confuse it with a, with a class or a method name. So our actor enemy, we're going to check get one intersecting object is a method. So what that does is it finds one intersecting object that is intersecting with whatever class we're in, which is the projectile class. So if find if something is intersecting the projectile and if the excuse me, the projectile is intersecting enemy.class. Okay, so we're going to find if, well, we're going to, this is going to grab any actor information that is when the projectile is intersecting the enemy class. So that's what this get one intersecting object is. It's getting one object of enemy class that is intersecting the projectile. So if the projectile is intersecting the enemy, we need to do something. So we need to put this in an if statement. Now this is going to be, follow me closely and just try to wrap your head around this. So if enemy, which we have named this, we have declared that this will be an actor, okay, of the enemy class. So we have named this enemy, and what we're doing is we're going to find an intersecting object that is intersecting the projectile of the enemy class. Okay, And if that does not equal null. Now, at this time, try to think about what null means. Look it up if you have to. Uh, pause the video if you need to. And understand, try to understand what null means. Uh, if you want to keep going, I'll explain it to you right here. Null means nothing. Okay, so what we're asking here, if I did equals equals nothing, when enemy equals equals nothing, so if I fired a projectile and there was no enemy intersecting it, that's what this would mean. So if we change this to an exclamation point, what that does is it means not equal to nothing. So that would say if enemy is not intersecting nothing, which is a double negative, but computers understand not intersecting nothing as intersecting something. And it, it, it just is easier for a computer to understand not intersecting nothing because it's hard to explain if it's intersecting something. The word something you can't really use to a computer we understand the concept of it, but a computer doesn't understand not intersecting or intersecting something. It understands when it's not intersecting nothing. So that is why we do not equal to nothing. And we have named enemy. So this, you could literally copy this whole thing in 
and paste it right here. The problem is, and it would be, it still compile, same thing, class compiled, everything's good. The problem is, is we're going to be using this later and we want to be able to use it in the right way. So we're going to rename it as this variable actor enemy. Okay? Follow along with me. So uh, if the projectile hits the enemy, is intersecting the enemy, we're going to do get world dot remove object. And instead of this, we're going to remove object enemy. So it's going to find whatever enemy is intersecting the projectile, intersecting the projectile, and we're going to remove it. Okay? As easy as that. And then we're going to get world right after it, after we've removed 60 times per second, so extremely qu quickly, and remove object this. And now we will go and test that. And I have not put it in the act method, so it will not work. So you always need to remember, even I forget, putting it in the act method. So hit enemy needs to be put in the act method. Now, once we do hit enemy, now this is going to be a little bit too unfair. Okay? So I had an error pop up. Is it still popping up for me? Okay. See, that's fine. Now we got an error. What's the error? Actor not in world. An act, attempt was made to use the actor's location while it's not in the world. Ah, so if we remove object this when we hit the enemy, and then we're trying to remove it from the world right here, the remove, uh, remove from world is not going to work. So what happens if we move it here? Is there going to be an error? Well, yeah, there is actually going to be an error. There's going to be an error when you try to hit the enemy because it's trying to check if you hit the world. So this is where we're going to learn a new concept, and it's going to be an if, else if. If. We're going to need to combine the hit enemy uh, with the remove from world. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out that method. I'm going to take out the hit enemy. And we're going to say if get y equals equals 0. Excuse me. Actually, we're going to put this first because first we're going to check if it hits the enemy. Okay. And then we're going to do something called an else if. So this connects. Notice how before. These are separate, if this, if this. But if you do an else, if you hit enemy, we're going to remove the enemy, and we're going to read this code, and we're going to be done. We're just going to stop reading code after this. So this is the last line of code. But if this is not true, it's going to be looking for this code. So then it will read this code, and then it can check if this is true. That allows for it to check for both but not at the same time. So it won't remove both objects and it won't come up with an error. So now it hits the enemy if it hits the enemy, else it will remove object from the world. So that is all we have for today. Um, we're gonna be getting into doing a lot more stuff uh, later on. I hope you guys come back for part three. Um, thanks for watching.